So, Minister, how can we ensure that COP27 uh, policy recommendations are fair and inclusive for the developing world? Um, no, that's a that's a good question because we've questioned about the, some of the policies that have been uh, given to us by some of the developed nations, uh, which have the potential for uh, petroleum products, which they have access to, uh, which they have the forex to uh, access to. Uh, but for developing countries like us to transit immediately uh, is a challenge. Unless the technical assistance, unless the financial assistance from the development agencies and those countries are given to countries like us, it's going to be a difficult challenge to transit uh, for transition. Uh, that's why we are working with some of the development agencies to see uh, how we can uh, get some of those assistance needed uh, to achieve those targets. But we are committed to achieving those targets as well. Uh, renewable energy plans of 7030, no coal policy is something that we've already planned for. So those things we are committed to, but in committing that, uh, we do need to uh, fulfill our own requirements and also find a way to uh, transition in a better way. So in time of crisis, how do we pragmatically balance out energy security with the transition on a global level. We talked about that on the panel. It is not just a matter of turning it from day to night to go from an energy transition. It's a mix that needs to happen over 10, 20, 30 years, sometimes longer. How do we do that, pragmatically speaking? Sri Lanka transforming into green hydrogen, uh, but it's not going to be for our full requirements. It's going to be way over our requirements, the potential that we do have. Uh, that's where we need the support assistance of policymakers uh, in global forums. Uh, to support us uh, into this transition. What commitments do you hope to come out of COP27? You were at COP26. Big mandates, big, big, big mandates were made on countries, including de uh, you know, developing countries. What commitments do you see or hope to come out of COP27? Uh, the Sri Lankan delegation at COP26 um, actually gave in commitments for a no coal policy uh, by 2040. Uh, so no new coal plant power plants to be established in Sri Lanka, so which is a policy that has already been implemented in Sri Lanka. Uh, our second coal power plant that was to be established in 2015 uh, was scrapped, and in term in in uh, in in uh, exchange for that, we've uh, developed a solar power park that will be established in the same uh, facility. Uh, uh, but in doing so, we need to be very careful because. 30% uh, of our uh, energy requirements right now are met with the coal power plant that we do operate. Uh, so uh, decommissioning the power plant will, will require another stable power plant uh, that could take it its place. And hydro capacities, we've exceeded all our hydro capacities. And the only other capabilities that we do can go is for LNG facility or for a nuclear power plant. Nuclear power plant is a challenging obstacle for us being an island nation. Uh, but uh, we are looking into transition of LNG, uh, but then again, uh, we have to depend on the energy supply, the gas supply uh, from imports. That's why we are looking at investments, uh, the technical possibilities of uh, exploration in uh, the Sri Lankan waters.